fucking <laughs> going crazy at it. Oh boy, have I got a treat for you. So this idea randomly came to mind today. Um, currently, I am in the process of making my Lost Boys video. I'm also sick, if you can't tell already. Basically, I was searching through the interwebs. I was making my Lost Boys video. Why do I keep saying Lost Boys? Lost Boys, Lost Boys, Lost Boys. I was making my video, right? And I was trying to make the comparison how the Lost Boys basically changed how vampires are looked at, how the style is compared to over time, you know, compared to Nosferatu. Well, debatably uh, one of the first vampire movies to really get it. And then I went to other movies and I was trying to look for a vampire movie that had came out in the 80s that might have shown me the complete 180 of uh, how vampires were different before the Lost Boys came out. Anyways, boy, did I find something interesting. I found a movie that is so bad that it's like kind of good. I guess, called Vin in 1986. Basically, the story follows this guy, I think his name's Keith, and his friend, I don't even know his, his friend's name. What is his name? Vamp 1986 cast. It shows Keith and AJ, two best buds trying to get into a fraternity, but there's like this weird fraternity going on that like likes to or something and they're in the beginning of the movie they're trying to get into this like frat right and the ritual is that you literally have to hang yourself to get into the frat house which is interesting i guess and they really want to go into this frat i don't understand why they literally couldn't have just i don't know chose something else that was not as crazy anyways they don't want to hang themselves and aj proposes the idea that he would do any any get into the frat party house and basically what transpires is that the nerds the nerdy little frat boy Boys, they want to get strippers at their frat house and they want AJ and Keith to send in the stripper. So they begin their quest to find the ultimate stripper lady. And they found her. They found it. And long story short, they go to like the Bronx or I don't even know where the fuck this movie takes place. It goes to the city and they fucking they go to this strip club bar, right? They're like, oh, yeah, this one. This one looks fucking sick, dude. Also, forgot to mention they don't have a car. Honestly, this character, I I have no idea why this character is in it, but uh, Duncan, uh, he's basically this kind of nerdy guy that is only along with them because AJ and Keith didn't have a car to get to the city in order to get the stripper. So they asked Duncan to join them um, on their quest because he has a car and Duncan has no friends. All right, let's just put that out there. Lee has no friends. So he strikes a deal with AJ and Keith that he will go with them, but only if their friends for a week and that's literally all it is they just have to act like they're friends for a week so motherfucking aj keith and duncan set their sights they go to the strip club and lo and behold they find the magnum opus dude they find katrina they find the lovely young lady katrina more like hurricane tortilla i don't know if i said this enough already this movie is so like weird and hard to follow like this is the first time in a long time that i have been like what the fuck am i watching they go and they introduce katrina and you know you think you'd be like oh some badass like dance choreography thing going on or i don't know just some random shit it is the weirdest thing i have ever seen in my life they introduce katrina and she does like some kind of weird like abstract vampire mating ritual thing going on they got like the head cut off like spirals on a mannequin head and she's like fucking gyrating all over the place she's like on the fucking mannequin and she's like fucking <laughs> going crazy at it but the scene goes on for like a good two minutes wait a minute Nani? uh let's see how long this katrina vamp scene how long is this dance this scene goes on for three minutes apparently holy shit the fucking the soundtrack to this movie the trailer i watched the trailer first and this trailer fucking slaps i don't know who went crazy in the direct department or the trailer department or whatever fuck that shit slaps. I genuinely was like, oh my God, I literally just found a hidden gem vampire movie that nobody knows that I can gatekeep. Long story short, that wasn't the case. Motherfucking, I'm watching it. I'm like, sick. And through the movie, you get, obviously, you know, there's soundtracks to movies and stuff. And I looked at the comments for the trailer of this movie and literally there were people going, the soundtrack is amazing. It's so unmatched. It's the greatest thing ever. Holy shit. Motherfucker plays the same jungle core 
boom bap, like, fucking predator, like, uh, I don't know, Jamaican style, like, drums. And it's, like, that same exact song for the whole movie. Whenever any tense moment comes up, oh, fucking snowball is gonna chase us. Oh, it's their jungle dance. Oh, Katrina, Katrina's going fucking crazy, dude. Oh my God. Like this doesn't fit the movie at all. Like at all. It's like so weird. I don't understand. Anyways, back to the clip. You and my friends there we go. Remember me? Also, this chick right here, this chick, there's some like weird shit going on with this chick. That chick, I don't even know her name. What is her name? What is her name? Guys, let's let's look at her name. Allison works at the strip club called After Dark. And uh, I guess nobody decided to fill her in that the whole entire crew is full of blood sucking fiends, monsters and demons. And she's just the new girl. She's innocent, you know? Maybe they'll bring her in. Maybe Katrina will do some nasty things to her. I don't know. And anyways, basically, as Katrina's gyrating everywhere, Allison confronts Keith and she's like, yo, I fucking know you. Like, it's been so long since I've seen you. Like, oh my God. And Keith's like, I don't know you. Who the fuck are you? And Allison's like, how could you forget me? Oh my God. Like, we had such a great time together. And he's like, I really don't know who you are. And this happens through the whole movie. And, you know, this does get revealed, but in the shittiest way possible, you know? You're going through the movie, I kid you not, we'll pull the clips up. Allison is constantly like, yo, like, I can't believe you don't remember, like, this, that was so crazy that day, or, oh my god, I remember AJ, like, this is so fucking crazy. He's like, who the fuck are you? Like, bitch, who are you? And listen, in my mind, I'm like, holy shit, like, there's like some kind of subplot going on where Keith is like fucking Van Helsing reincarnate or some shit and they're like in love with each other. Like Keith doesn't remember who he is, but Allison does and they're like meant for each other, but they don't know it yet. But they Allison does know it and Keith doesn't. Like I thought some shit was about to go down. It's about to be some crazy ass reveal. No, it does not happen. The big reveal I give you, the big reveal is this. My name. I'm Allison. And Allison Hicks, remember Seaside Heights? Summer vacation, fifth grade, we were in Sue Leonard's basement, we were playing spin the bottle, and, and I spun in Atlanta on Moose, and you kind of pushed the bottle, and I didn't have to kiss him, I ended up kissing you, remember now? <laughs> yeah. You have incredible timing. <laughs> she fucking, like, kissed him, playing spin the bottle in, like, fifth grade? What? This motherfucker is crying, like straight up crying, getting fucking mad as hell at Keith for not knowing that they like kissed or like encountered each other in fifth grade over like a kiss, bro. What the fuck? And don't even get me started in, on Snowball, dude. Billy Drago, Snowball. Anyways, I'll, I'm gonna get to it. Let's let's go back to Katrina. I give you Katrina. So this is the lovely Katrina. What? Very beautiful. Uh, I think this is Grace Jones, if I'm not mistaken. I guess she was actually a pretty somewhat decent sized um, model back in the day. Um, she does definitely has an interesting look. Moving on. That's exactly what I'm thinking right now, Katrina. This clip's four minutes long. Let's go to the gyrating part, all right? Where is she gonna gyrate? Where's the gyration? Is this gyration right here? <laughs> Holy fuck, Katrina. <laughs> AJ's like, Holy fuck, I love this. Like, what? Uh, okay. Yeah, I guess. 
Gyrations, we love it. We love gyrations. Okay. This goes on for a while. So this this clip basically goes on for three of the four minutes. And this is the big reveal of Katrina, yo. Like, Katrina is fucking nuts. Like, she's beautiful. Katrina is introduced. The boys are convinced. They're like, Katrina is gonna fucking rock these frat boys' panties upside down. They're gonna go crazy. They're gonna wanna hang themselves after seeing that for real. And so AJ thinks he's gonna get a little risky. All right. AJ wants to meet up Trina. So there's this really like awkward and weird sex scene that goes on with AJ and Katrina. Not really a sex scene. She just starts like licking his nipples everywhere, you know, like a dog. Maybe a cat, some milk. Anyways, and long story short, Katrina is seducing AJ full on. AJ's full erect. He's fucking off one. He's like, AJ, I love you. I love you so much, AJ. This is so cool. And they're going at it. They're taking the shirt off. They're rubbing on each other. She has weird ass like metal things covering her nipples, probably because she was a model at the time and they are weird like that. And she's going ham. She's going fucking hog wild. And AJ's like, all right, sweet. And then she goes in for the kill to AJ. <laughs> AJ screams. AJ is, he's hes going through it. He's going through the ringer. He just got, he just literally got bit. He's going through the ringer, man. And basically Katrina kills AJ. So Keith and Duncan are now there at the strip club it's called After Dark. It's also a good song by Mr. Kitty. They're like, where is AJ, dude? Where, where the fuck is AJ? So they ask this like little chick and she's like, oh, I don't know where AJ is. I haven't seen him around. And they're like, what the fuck, dude? So they go looking for AJ and AJ's dead. He died, but they don't know that yet. Before I before I go into that, AJ, he's got a little femboy in him, or he, AJ's got a little zest in him, all right? He's got the little zesty energy in him. Not bad. I'm a little zesty myself. AJ's got a little fight, all right? Basically, in the very beginning, when they go to a bar before they go to the strip club, AJ is confronted by none other than Snowball. Fuck Keith and AJ and Duncan, even Katrina. We got Snowball in this bitch. Dude looks like if Billy Idol and David Bowie like had sex and then they, even though they were taking crack, this child took even more crack. So he just looks like a fucking abomination and you get Snowball, all right? Anyways, before we even see Snowball, he has got the hots for another chick, another girl. And he's looking at her. Looking all nice, nice and suave and sexy. They're like winking at each other. AJ's like, this isn't a good idea, man. You should look at her, dude. Might be something wrong with her. I don't know. And she's looking, she's looking. Then she smiles at him and you see this. And Keith feels some kind of way about that. And Snowball sees that and he gets fucking, he gets fucking balls to the wall, man. So then Snowball confronts Keith, right? Keith and AJ. Uh, and then they get into a fight. AJ goes fucking hog wild and pun intended, I don't know why they did this. AJ literally is grabbing Snowball's balls for like a good solid two to three minutes. It's in frame too. Bro, it's literally like <laughs> Snowball, like grabbing Snowball's nutsack as like a fucking sign of like domination or some shit. Like you could have grabbed him any other way. You could have fucking grabbed him down a little Vin Diesel or some shit. Like you're the buster or some stupid shit. But no, he's literally doing the fucking Michael Jackson or some shit. Like, calm the fuck down, Snowball. Like, I got your balls now, all right? And this goes on for a while. I, I, I don't know why they did this. Uh, You know, this is why I think AJ's a little zesty. You know, he was like smiling. He was enjoying it from what I remember. So, you know, maybe that's his character. I don't know. Maybe he likes the zest. I mean, he did go for Katrina. That was, that was a very interesting choice. Um, Anyways, now we cut back. AJ is fucking dead, bro. AJ is dead but the problem is the vampires didn't oversee that keith and duncan and aj were all together in one group because usually at this bar they only take out the loners press kids like myself and emos the ones that people don't care about so and this is quite a shock to the after dark owner and manager Vic, who I'm not entirely sure is a vampire. I think they're all vampires, but it doesn't really like show. Vic's like, holy shit, this isn't good. Like we need to do something. So instead of like, I think they try to kill Keith and Duncan, but don't do it. And then randomly, Keith's like going to take a poo and he hears the doors slam one by one, the stalls, boom, boom they all open. And then goes to Keith's, it's shaking. 
Fucking doors gyrating like Katrina. And boom! AJ busts in. It's me. Hey, yo, what the fuck? And fucking he is like, but I thought you were dead, AJ, because he saw AJ dead in the dumpster a little earlier. And he's like, nah, man, I'm good. So AJ brings Keith to the back of the strip club for some whatever reason. And basically, one of the strippers hacks Keith, but AJ saves the day. And then he reveals that he's a vampire. So he's starving now because he hasn't eaten yet. His eyes are getting pale. Skin is getting darker. And he's like, he's like, Keith, I'm really hungry. Like, you better do something. You better, you better kill me or I'm going to eat you. I'm going to eat you good. And he's like, no. But you're my friend. He's like, no, but I'm hungry. So they go through a little scuffle. And then AJ's like, fine, fine. All right, I'll find somebody else to do it. And then Keith goes in for either like some kind of hug maneuver. Like, oh yeah, bring it in, brother. Or he tries to kill Keith. But then he purposely stabs himself and kills himself with a with a little like broken chair stick. He just sticks it in his heart. So we think. And Keith's like, fuck. Like, AJ's dead, dude. So then they move on. They escape the little fucking strip club. Then they get hunted down by Snowball. And we also see the security guard um, that we meet earlier as well. And he has like scars all over his back. And the first thing that I saw when I saw like, it was just straight holes in his back. It was weird. Like first thing, like they're mentioning like Katrina and security guard are like no longer a thing. I think Vic mentions like, you know, you and Katrina are not a thing anymore. You're living in the past, man. So that makes me think like security guard and Katrina did like some kinky shit. And Allison and Keith and Duncan, they all like try to run away, right? And Duncan, he's a little fucking nerd, like I said. Uh, Duncan was getting a little crunk. He was he was too crunk, right? He's fucking, he's fucking spilling drinks everywhere, going crazy. And then basically Keith, to escape the strip club, like pours like alcohol. He's like, oh, I'm so drunk. And he's like spilling alcohol everywhere. And he's gonna use it because it's flammable fire right spoon everywhere oh my god light it on fire ah they escape right uh none of the vampires die and they escape and then as they're escaping right it's duncan and allison and keith all together they're escaping fucking duncan turns into a vampire dude he must have done like some lost boy shit he drank the blood of the demon katrina and he turned or some shit he turned into a full-on demon gorgite so i was like holy shit so then they, they don't even give a shit i mean like i said earlier duncan was never their friend they never even gave shit about him they he just wanted to hang out with him because he was so lonely and so they kill him we do not care and then uh they get to a point where they're eventually in the sewers right they're going through the sewers and they find the lair the good old lair right where all the vampires sleeping going night night and they find it and they're hiding in there and they see all of them go and sleep in there they try to sneak out and like allison for the stupidest fucking reason ever just randomly screams and obviously that wakes up all of the vampires they're like fuck all right now we need to do this and then you know production budget must have been pretty low uh three million dollars by the way they use the same trick that they did earlier they just literally lit the place on fire they pushed water or chemicals over and lit it on fire killed them um and they're running through the sewers right it's just keith and allison now they're running through blah 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 then eventually katrina emerges the vampire queen herself the red-haired demonoid lulu from fifth element looking ass motherfucker she goes hog wild she's full gorgon mode right now she's full demon mode whatever you want to call it she goes and she somehow she gets a hold of Allison and she's like holding her hostage. And earlier in the movie, Keith grabs a bow and arrow. And this is foreshadowing because actually earlier in the movie, AJ was eating on an apple and Keith just randomly, for no reason at all, fucking open arrow. You don't know if he's going to miss or not. Full last arrow goes to aim for the apple and, you know, he makes it. But, you know, if you miss, you would have like got an arrow straight to Keith's head. He would have died anyways, because, you know, he did die in the movie. So that was like foreshadowing, right? So we get up to the final part of the movie. Keith versus Katrina and fighting for Allison's life. He goes, he's like, all right, let's fucking do this for Keith. Let's do it. Shoots the arrow, boom, gets Katrina. What do you expect? And it's good, right? It's all good. And she's like, ah, 
Ah, she's got the arrow. Allison's free, but but Katrina's not completely dead, right? She's like going after Keith, right? Slowly but surely. And then somehow, like, I don't know how this really makes sense. It would make sense if there was like a manhole cover, but this is too big of an opening. Somebody could have just fucking fallen through this hole. Keith's looking through and he sees a little ass ray of light coming from up top from the sewers. This is deep underground, by the way, right? He sees a little beam of light. And I'm like, oh shit, they're going to use the good old sunlight trick, huh? So he's like, okay. He just hits the board up. It's not It's not crazy. He just literally hits the board up. Boom, beam of light comes. Katrina stops on her steps. Holy shit. And he's like, all right, boom, I'm stopping. And then there's two more boards. There's one right here, one right here, and then one in the middle. There's three of them. Trina's at the first one, farthest one, towards Keith. And she's like, oh shit. And then Keith's like, oh yeah. And then he does the other one on the other side. And now Katrina's trapped. She has nowhere to run. And then Keith just lets it out. Boom. Sunlight everywhere. It's Katrina. She's fucking gyrating again. Gyrating harder than she's ever gyrated in her life. No! And she dies. She turns into a skeleton. Then the skeleton starts to move. And <laughs> I like none of the jokes hit for this movie. I'm gonna be honest. These, these fucking jokes suck. Big ones, man. And this is the hardest that I laughed in the movie. If you look closely, you don't even have to look closely. You could just see it. The the prop guy, the, the producer, the directors, I guess didn't see this. A pretty massive mistake. You can literally just see a hand moving the skeleton of Katrina's hand and making a middle figure right towards Keith, right there. And you could just see it. It goes. And that was Katrina's last words. So you think that's it, right? Keith and Allison are like, all right, get out of here. Let's make love. Let's do it like we did in fifth grade, except more naughty. And then all of a sudden, a security guard comes. Katrina's little boy toy returns. And he's like, ah. he's going to try to kill Keith, right? Then boom, from out of nowhere, he's killed from the back. And then what do you know? AJ returns and he's like, I thought you were dead, AJ. And I don't remember exactly what he said. I think he said something along the lines of, I didn't aim for the heart or something like that. So now AJ's live and he's like, okay, well, we got to go. I'm, I'm done trusting you. We're not friends anymore. And then they leave and they go up. Sunlight, Allison and Keith do the good old kiss. And fucking AJ's going to town. He's down there. He's like, hey, what about me, guys? Come on. And they're like, oh, forget about it. And they walk off in the sunset. And that is the end. So very interesting movie. I get it's a strip club, but literally like, it's like the fucking producers didn't knew that their movie was gonna be boring as shit. Cause they literally have strippers doing dance scenes every 10, five minutes. At, for at least two, three minutes, not as long as Katrina though, you know, fucking all hell between or whatever. They literally do this every 10 minutes. I don't know why. Maybe because they just knew that this movie was kind of boring. I liked it. But yeah, that was Vamp 1986. Greatest vampire movie of all time. I hope you guys enjoyed. Ah!